Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. Uh, as you all know, it's been a massive weekend of sports, endurance sports. We've had the, the one hour record being broken, the UCI one hour record being broken. We've had the Ironman World Championships. We've had the UCI Gravel World Championships. But I want to draw attention to the men's race of the Ironman World Championships and particularly Look, I think if anyone would agree, uh, well, you know, if there was ever a standout performance, it was definitely Sam Laidlow coming in second. Uh, and by standout, I mean one that probably shocked a lot of people. Um, I think he's definitely had the talent, but his performance, you know, in the past, but his performance at the Ironman World Championships on Saturday was an absolute phenomenal effort. And I want to analyze some of his... Uh, actual splits um just want to say before we get into it i appreciate all the new subscribers to the channel uh, i want to try and bring a good balance of race recaps um some highlight footage and also the regular content of health optimization everything else like that haven't been so active with that lately um medical school studies have been quite busy but uh definitely in the coming weeks and particularly over summer australian summer i want to try and get right back into all that and keep a good balance on the channel so thank you everyone for the support so jumping into it having a look at sam laidlow's strava this is a good thing about strava it's uh you know one of those things where the transparency uh is really um you know we're, we're able to see just uh very transparently what these athletes are doing and we have a look at sam laidlow here and his ride this is off the back of coming second out of the water with a 48 minute 16 minute uh 16 second swim 48 minutes 16 swim second out of the water and you know watching his breakfast with bob championship edition interview he was definitely well it definitely seemed like he wasn't swimming all that hard you know he tried to get away off the front didn't do it and so kind of resided to the fact that he was going to be in that front pack uh a bit up the front of that front front pack um but you know he even mentioned he did a couple of backstroke um strokes at one stage just to get a sighting of where everyone was so evidently not the hardest swim for him he's a phenomenal swimmer but i think the advantage of having a relatively easy swim for your ability or your talent or fitness level is that you can get out and you get on the bike and go quite hard straight away as opposed to needing you know 5k 10k to really try and get the legs back get the blood back into the legs and kind, kind of recover from being you know flat out in the water for the best part of 50 minutes so 48 16 swim second down the water we know we got onto the bike and really attacked it early he got off the front with um max newman the aussie an amazing debut you know the, the first four was it even yeah first four athletes all on debut um incredible over the line so he gets out and this ride is just incredible 179.61 k so this is his strava so he's obviously started his garmin or his device whenever he got uh up to some speed and so it's not the entire ride as per the results he rode 404 with some extra change on the results but here we've got 40258 so for this for the majority of the ride you know has recorded his uh his output his average power if we go into the analysis was down here 311 watts it took me a little while to try and find how heavy he was um because he actually looks like a pretty slim build dude i didn't realize exactly how tall he was either i think going off the pto triathlon stats he's about 75 kilograms which is more than i thought but it makes sense because he's about 189 centimeters tall so he's a re really tall guy and 75 kilograms so 100 and oh, sorry 311 watts average huge output you know it's it's a very impressive output works out to be about in the realm of 4.1 to 4.2 i think it's like 4.14 or 4.15 watts per kilo average um so you know pretty uh consistent with what some of the top guys are doing but we know that on a course like this on an individual time trial absolute power to weight isn't always the biggest factor you know it's all about cda it's all about aerodynamics it's about the conditions on the day it's also about how you it's well secondly it's about absolute power and you know how much you're absolutely putting out because it's not like we're on massive climbs but it is quite a hilly course you know if we look at the course profile it's definitely not 
in any way a flat course up and down all day particularly here you know we have this climb back up onto the queen k coming down from howie and a lot of this is about i think and cam worth's definitely spoken about this you know how you ride the course how you attack the course you know you can have someone ride the exact same person on the exact same conditions average 300 watts for 180 k's consistently and ride slower than if they average 300 watts for the same distance on the same course same day but if they attack a little bit over the top of the hills carry some speed and then recover down because we know that when you're going uphill you're definitely putting out uh well you've got less air resistance because you're uh going slower than when you're going downhill so the absolute reward or the return on investment for power output up the hill is greater than power output down the hill where you want to try and just maximize your aero position etc so He's obviously ridden the course really well. And what is super impressive to me is that he attacked it from the start, basically rode essentially to the turnaround by himself. You know, got caught a little bit beforehand by Blumenfeld, um, who was always with Max Newman, but Max wasn't really doing any work. Um, and Gustav and Ditlev as well. So then joined up with those guys and then hit him again to ride off solo on the way back. For a 404 bike split, you know, uh, 404 36 to be precise. So, took almost, you know, almost five minutes off the previous bike course record held by Cam Worth. So, incredible, in absolutely incredible. And 48 minutes for him, 404 bike, everyone's kind of like, well, this guy ain't going to run very well. Now, what I would say is even just as, if not maybe more impressive than this bike ride, is the fact that he basically even split the run. If we go down to his run here, Norwegian Sandwich, definitely that's what it was. Uh, 353 uh, splits per kilometer. You can convert that to miles. We work in kilometers here in Australia. So um, you do the conversion, but 353 per kilometer. And what's super impressive, if we have these estimated times, um, half marathon effort, 121.29. So 121 and a half and then if we doubled that it would be what two hours 43 and he's basically gone through the marathon marathon in two hours 43 16 uh, 17. so this is off his um strava which said it was a little bit long obviously the gps isn't always 100 percent. the official race time was uh two hours 44 40 but you know going off his own data um essentially even split the run so there was basically no blow up whatsoever we look at his splits took off you know 341 then he's in the 350s 346 here um a few there's a 421 maybe getting a bit of nutrition in etc um basically all under four minutes um for the most part around that 350 mark and you know even getting into the last 10 k's so from 32 down to 42 uh 347 342 357 349 344 355, there's a 411 there, 353, there's a 415. Um, that, I think that's coming back up. Yeah, 30 meters of elevation. And then 338, 339, 330 for the last 300 meters to finish off. So, you know, an absolute incredible effort. And I can't believe, well, I can believe it because we saw it with our own eyes that he essentially negative, not negatively split, but he even split the run. I think that's one thing that we rarely see in a race like Kona is an even split run. I think it's uh, one thing to go out and run a fast half marathon with the adrenaline and everything else, but you're really going to start feeling it. It was a warm day and particularly even warmer for these guys that have been out there all day. It's radiating, the heat's radiating off the road and to even split that run is just insane. Massive PB. I think it was well over, I think it was over a 10 minute PB or around about 10 minute PB for his run his marathon best ever effort. So, you know, I think one of the best ever rides he's ever done, um, well, probably definitely the best ever ride he's ever done. I don't know power-wise what he had done in the past, but 311 watts was it for 180 Ks, 44 and a half kilometers an hour roundabout. Um, and then to even split a 244-40 marathon is just nuts. You know, absolutely nuts. So I think we've got to look out for this guy in the future. Um, and one thing as well is imagine coming off the bike with a six and a half minute lead, running a 244, 40 marathon and not winning. 
you know, the level in the last, I'm not going to say few years because it hasn't been on for a couple of years, but the last few Konas has just gone absolutely insane, you know, insane. To be caught running a 244 after you got off the bike with a 630 lead, ridiculous. And it's good to see. It's good to see that level. It's good to see the guys coming up from the shorter distances, um, but even just like the, these younger guys, um, Sam Laidlow, only 23 years of age, Gustav Blumenfeld, um, mid to late 20s, what are they, like 27, 28, 29-ish, um, I'm not sure exactly, but, you know, not, not uh, they're definitely on the younger side for, uh, you know, Kona, and I think even going back five years, it was definitely this assumption that Kona being such a hard race, it definitely favours the more experienced, uh, harder guys in terms of having miles under the legs, having these Ironmans under the belt, whereby you can get through a long endurance event like Kona. And what we're seeing now is that these young guys are coming to the coming to the party and they're absolutely blowing it up. So, you know, they're really kind of putting an end to that assumption that you need to be uh, someone with a lot of years of racing experience under the belt. They are coming in and they're attacking the race. They're not out there just surviving. They're just taking it on, attacking it. And I think it's it's incredible to see. It's incredible for incredible viewing. I was on the edge of my seat. Um, and yeah, like I said, I think that there was, uh, everyone was kind of, not everyone, but a lot of people were saying, you know, Laidlow's going to blow up. He's, he's had a massive effort on the bike. Incredible swim, incredible ride. It's just that in and of itself is amazing 23 years of age if he comes top 10 wow uh but you know to almost win the thing is insane and to run a 10 minute plus uh a marathon pb uh, you know, like i've got no words i've got no words just bought it all together on the day let me know what you guys think what did you think of the performance and the even split run there's absolutely no drop off in performance throughout that whole run no no drop off at all never blew up so um hope you guys found some of those stats interesting i find it fascinating and the level at which we're seeing these guys compete now uh yeah who knows what like imagine 10 years from now what kona is going to be very very exciting so take care everyone again appreciate all the support with the channel and um yeah we will uh i'll see you in the next video